Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I hope you're all doing well out there. We're good here. Though, I gotta say, one of the oddest things about doing the show at home from my little study here is that it's starting to feel normal. And that is really weird. I mean, why is my son sitting on that couch over there with a headset on talking to my director back in New York? Say hi to Jim. Hi, Jim. Does he say hi back? Does Jim say hi back? Didn't say hi back. Is he mad at me? Probably. Peter's been terrific. Every member of my family has been terrific, which statistically means I'm the bad roommate. But what are we gonna do? We have no choice. Right now, inside is the place to be because the news from the outside is alarming. This week, the government projected 100,000 to 240,000 deaths from coronavirus. That's why it's so important right now that everyone just stay safe and stay focused and stay inside. And I know you, the American people, get it. But some of our elected officials are slow on the uptake. Republican governors in 11 states still refuse to issue stay-at-home orders. They're defiant to the end. They've even got their own patriot flag. Don't cough on me. But some Republicans are starting to come around, like Florida governor and 10th grader who read someplace that squinting was sexy, Ron DeSantis. After refusing to shut the state's beaches during spring break, yesterday DeSantis issued a statewide stay-at-home order and he explained what changed his mind. It's a very serious situation. I mean, when you see the president up there, if you've seen his demeanor the last couple of days, that's not necessarily uh, how he, he always is. So it wasn't the data or the scientist. It was Trump's demeanor. How does that work? Is he the coronavirus groundhog? Legend says if Punxsutawney Trump folds his arm and frowns, six more weeks of quarantine. DeSantis wasn't the only one seeing the light a little late. So is Georgia governor and man who told his plastic surgeon, give me the joker, Brian Kemp. Yesterday, Governor Kemp held a press conference to announce that he's finally going to take coronavirus seriously because some brand new information had come to light. This virus is now transmitting before people see signs. Those individuals could have been infecting people before they ever felt bad. Well, we didn't know that until the last 24 hours. And as Dr. Toomey uh, told me, she goes, this is a game changer for us. You didn't know that until yesterday? It's all anyone's been talking about since January. You're like a guy saying, you know, I finally started watching this Game of Thrones. No one told me there were dragons in it. This is a game changer. Everyone knows the virus can spread before people are symptomatic. That's why we're social distancing, you numb nut. In February, the director of the CDC said this to Congress. What we have learned in the last eight weeks um, is that this virus can actually cause asymptomatic infection. No symptoms. Can you tell how long ago that was? I'll give you a hint. It happened in a room full of people. Another governor who is not helping is Wisconsin Democrat Tony Evers, seen here pushing a staffer into a well. Evers and his GOP-controlled legislature refused to postpone Wisconsin's election, which is scheduled for this Tuesday, despite the fact that more than 100 municipalities will not have enough poll workers to open a single voting location. Bernie Sanders called on Wisconsin to postpone its election and have everyone vote by mail, explaining, people should not be forced to put their lives on the line to vote. Well said, my imitation of Bernie. Polling places should not be dangerous. We all remember what happened back in 1972 when Alabama replaced their poll workers with Bengal tigers. Voting by mail seems like an obvious solution, but Wisconsin requires everyone voting by mail to obtain a witness signature. On election day in Wisconsin, they give out two stickers. I voted and I like to watch people vote. And come on, everyone is social distancing right now. And what if you live alone like 77 year old Sally Cohen who complained, I was just distraught this morning when I opened it and saw that you have to have a witness. I thought, I just can't do it. They suggested having the mailman look through the picture window, but I'm in the third floor, so that won't work. This is what I've been saying for years. Mailmen should all carry ladders so they can look through old women's windows. No one listened. Democrats want to remove barriers like this all over the country. In the recently passed stimulus bill, Nancy Pelosi, my guest tonight, tried to get funding to move the entire country to vote by mail, but that was roundly rejected by the president and he explained why on the Fox and the Friends. The things they had in there were crazy. 
they had things, uh, levels of voting that if you ever agreed to it, you'd never have a Republican elected in this country again. Wow. You can't say that out loud. You're supposed to pretend that you won the election because people like you. That's like saying, I can't stand these newfangled scoreboards. Levels of touchdown counting, that it is crazy. If you ever agreed to it, the loser would never win again. Trump's really not staying focused. He spent the first hour of yesterday's coronavirus briefing not talking about the coronavirus. Today, the United States is launching enhanced counter narcotics operations in the Western Hemisphere to protect the American people from the deadly scourge of illegal narcotics. Okay, maybe, but that is not the deadly scourge everyone's thinking about. I'm not bleaching my cucumbers because of illegal narcotics. Though I bet if you bleached a cucumber, it would get you high. Street name, Satan's Pickle. And again, my legal team has asked me to remind you, do not put bleach on your cucumbers, unless you want your gherkin to taste like a public pool. Then Trump shifted to something important to him. Did you know I was number one on Facebook? And I just found out I'm number one on Facebook. Stop it. Stop it. No one cares. He's like Nero watching Rome burning going, I just found out that I've got the number one single on the Billboard hot fiddling chart. I mean, it must be hot. I smell a lot of smoke. Who's making toast? I'm in. Now, during any national crisis, people start listening to conspiracy theories. I don't know why. Maybe it's the Illuminati mind control. But yesterday, one conspiracy theorist in Los Angeles, and stick with me on this one, tried to crash a speeding train into a hospital ship. Thankfully, no one was hurt, largely because after jumping the tracks, the train came to a stop 250 yards away from the boat. Little known fun fact, trains can't move forward if they're not on the tracks. Somebody really should have mentioned that to this guy who is a train engineer. This hospital ship is the sister ship of the one in New York Harbor, the Comfort. The one in LA is called the Mercy. And the, let's say, concerned citizen got on board the crazy train to sink the Mercy because he believed it had an alternate purpose related to COVID-19 or a government takeover. So this guy's dumb, and worst of all, totally ripped off the plot of the upcoming movie, Fast and Furious 10, Two Train, Two Boat. But don't worry, the cops got him. He was arrested and charged with one count of train wrecking. Stop with the legal mumbo jumbo. What did you charge him with? Oh, train wrecking, okay. One target of online conspiracies is leading infectious disease expert and nice Rumpelstiltskin who tries to help you guess his name, Anthony Fauci. Ever since this crisis began, Dr. Fauci has been joining Trump's daily press briefings to answer all the questions the president can't. So, the questions. Online conspiracy theorists see this as deliberately undermining the president, and now, after receiving threats, Anthony Fauci will be receiving enhanced personal security. Okay, that's good but I'm not sure the best way to protect a 79-year-old man right now is to surround him with people 24 hours a day. On CBS This Morning, this morning, on CBS, Dr. Fauci was asked about these added stressors. There are reports that you now have to have security. I'm wondering how this has affected you personally. You know, it's my job. This is the life I've chosen and I'm doing it. I mean, I mean, obviously there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I would be foolish to deny that, but that's what I do. It's a job to do and we've just got to do it. That is incredibly noble. You know what? I'm going to bring that level of dedication to my essential job during this crisis, making jokes about Andrew Cuomo's nipples. Dr. Fauci, well, I got you. You're an expert. What's going on down in Nip Town? Is he letting the old freak flag fly? Get back to me. Now, thankfully, the vast majority of Americans are grateful for the work Dr. Fauci has done. There has been a national swell of Fauci mania. Right now on Etsy, you can find Fauci t-shirts, Fauci prayer candles, even Fauci socks, because he said we couldn't put our hands on our faces, but he never said we couldn't put his face on our feet. Checkmate. Dr. Fauci, of course, has been incredibly gracious about all of this attention. 
Well, Dr. Fauci, listen, you're on donuts, you're on socks, you're on mugs. There's Fauci Friday, People Magazine. There's a petition to make you sexiest man alive because people say brains are sexy. I'm wondering how you're in, what your family thinks about all of this. It's really kind of crazy. <laughs> we try not to pay attention to that and just focus on the responsibility and the job that we have. That's the most important thing, not that other stuff. That is so humble and so sexy. Jim, can we put Fauci back up? Can we get a wider shot? Oh yeah, the National Institutes of Hotness. Just try to stay six feet away. Folks, we have a show for you tonight. Alicia Keys is somewhere, and I will talk to her. But when we return, I will be joined via satellite by the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. It's such a special occasion, I might put on a tie. Stick around.